The smart man would save this video until Guardians of the Galaxy 3, currently due to be released on May 5th, 2023. I'm not a smart man. Today's video is about Star-Lord from the Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's brought to you in part by my lovely patrons on Patreon. It's no secret that I've been very sick for the last year and a half, and my wonderful patrons on Patreon stuck with me. At the end of the video, I'm going to thank each and every one of them, like everyone I've ever had at any level. You can join too for just a buck or two a month at patreon.com slash fancygeeks. Star-Lord's look and character in the Guardians movies are a far cry from how he came about in the comics. Created by Steve Englehart in 1976 for Marvel Preview, Star-Lord spent most of the 20th century outside of the Guardians of the Galaxy, working on his own as an intergalactic superhero. He was most notably revamped by writer Chris Claremont in subsequent appearances for Marvel Preview. His new tone meant to be more in tune with the kind of young adult sci-fi novels written by noted sci-fi author Robert a Heinlein. That is how you say it, yeah. It was only in 2006 that he actually joined the second iteration of the Guardians of the Galaxy after the events of Annihilation Conquest. There are basically two Star-Lords in the Marvel Comics universe. His first iteration has been retconned to take place on Earth-791 and doesn't mesh with the rest of Marvel's continuity. Here, the classic version of Star-Lord is quite literally a Lord of the Stars. Born during a strange astronomical phenomenon, Peter's father dies of a heart attack shortly after he's born, and his mother Meredith is killed by aliens known as the Araguans? Araguans? You guys may be super paranoid about pronouncing things. After that, Peter grows up to become a NASA astronaut, only for an alien called the Master of the Sun to visit his space station and offer the mantle of Star-Lord to whomever is worthy. While it is initially given to another member of the crew and he's sent back to Earth, Peter persists. He steals a scout ship to return to the station and earns the title. Didn't the original Fantastic Fantastic Four origin story involved them stealing a rocket from NASA? What is it with Marvel Comics and spaceship theft? In the new canon comics, Peter Jason Quill is not the son of Ego the Living Planet like in the movies. Quill is the son of Jason, spelled with an apostrophe to make it seem more exotic, and he's an alien whose ship crash lands on Earth. While there, he meets and falls in love with Meredith Quill, only to have to leave after he fixes his ship and is recruited into an interstellar war, not knowing that Meredith was pretty pregnant with Peter. Ten years later, two Badoon soldiers come to Earth, killing Meredith before young Peter manages to kill them because you cannot be a superhero with two living parents. Like his original version, Peter grows up and becomes an astronaut for NASA. However, this time he steals a Kree ship from NASA and it ends up malfunctioning, leaving him stranded in space, again with the NASA spaceship theft. The Ravengers, led by Yondu, pick him up only for Peter to hijack their ship. Is no ship safe, you guys? Yondu gets loose, but Peter convinces Yondu to let him join his crew as a janitor. Comic Drake goes into much more detail about all of this in his Star-Lord video. There's a link in the description if you want to see how all of that turns out. Some more notable differences between the Star-Lords of the comics and movies are his weapons and his signature ship. In the comics, Star-Lord carries an element gun, which is a unique pistol that can fire any one of the four elements. Well, it was unique until Quill suddenly found another one. Drake has a great rant about that as well. Meanwhile, Movie Quill has dual energy pistols. Of course, Comic Quill often carries around a pair of Kree submachine guns as well. The Milano, as we know it from the MCU, is nowhere to be found in the comics. Instead, Star-Lord's comic ship is just called Ship. Ship itself is a sentient form of energy that can take any shape, though it can usually be found in the form of a starship. Peter also has a psychic link with the ship, and it can even take human form at times and restore itself, even if it it is totally destroyed. So that's Star-Lord in a nutshell. I'm sorry, what? I'm being told that uh, I'm not to make a joke about Star-Lord being in a giant nutshell. I'm doing it anyway, you're not the boss of me. Here's Star-Lord in a giant nutshell. So jump down to the comments section and let me know. Am I Groot? Have you ever stolen a spaceship from NASA? Is that like, is that a thing? Did Drax take your favorite knife? I hear he's bad for that. Until next time, please click subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notified when we release a new video. And please share this video on sites like Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter. 
you didn't like this video, then let me know by clicking the thumbs down button. You may not be able to see it now, but I can. And likewise, if you did like it, hit thumbs up. And a super special thank you to Dola, Sincerity, Airborne Surfer, My Dumb Question, David Gonzalez, Dry Erase Girl, Lauren Alexandra, The Almighty Father of Lies, Rachel Dallas Fort Worth, Drake McHorder, Scott from NerdSync, Nerd Outpost Alpha, Lore Reloaded, Brandon Allen, Jordan B, The Patron Saint of Fancy Geeks, Sleepy Hollow, Darren Henshaw, Prisania Micah, Bo Smith, Ken Steep, Ben Stone, Christopher Lang, Josh Gallagher, Orem's Corner, and Excelsius. Be kind to each other. I'm Jay Parks.